Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I almost said Andromeda. Anyway, earlier, dang, I just realized too that I didn't go around before going to get Liara. I didn't go around and have a chat with my teammates. I'm a failure. Oh my gosh, I got too excited when I was in the freaking menu. Oh no. I don't think I've necessarily missed anything, but dang it! I'm a fool! <laughs> Commander, you have a minute? I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. Hey, handsome. I hope, okay, I hope this is like, I hope I'm going through and like getting, uh, cause I'm partly tempted to go back. No, I'm not. I'm not tempted to go back. I mean, I am. I'm tempted to go back before the picking up Liara thing, but oh, I can't believe I messed that up. I'm such a fool. It's okay. Hopefully, hopefully we catch what we, what we, what we need to. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but. Ah. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. And it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Oh. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Malenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or, you know, for justice. Mm hmm. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. Ah. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Uh huh. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. <laughs> Encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. Uh huh. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Accident. I know. Caden, I don't know. I think a lot of people think Caden's kind of boring, but I feel like he's definitely, he's a well thought, like, man. Like, he thinks a lot about things. Like, the times where he's silent are not necessarily times he's just staring at walls. Like, he's, he thinks deeply about things, especially, I think he tries to think before he speaks, too type thing. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. That sounds honestly terrible. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Technically, yeah, Shepard should have gone. The biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Yeah, it probably got very outdated very quickly. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then, no one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Oh, the 100 percent They were like, it's like the large corporation trying to make a buck. They wouldn't care about using an entire like human populations as guinea pigs and people dying along the way. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet. 
prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bull every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. He's such a romantic. Like you, I guess. Oh, like me? <laughs> Did me? <laughs> like what? I mean, I'm not beautiful or rich. I mean, I'm not rich. I am beautiful. But not stuck up about it, I guess? That's a nice compliment. <laughs> and so, I don't know. It also, like, it could be not a nice compliment, honestly, where it's like, oh, you just assume every beautiful woman's stuck up about it. But sometimes they are. and But sometimes they are, you know? So, I don't know. It's interesting. I like it. It's all right. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same, but things never felt together. Training, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the bits. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. Yeah, well. I don't know. Shep Shepard's charming. Apparently she's charming. She gets people to talk to her. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> He's like, ah, what? You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? No, no I don't. We'll talk again later. Mm? I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that. Commitment. It's a little forward. Yeah. I'd like that. It's also a little terrifying because Shepard is technically the commanding officer. I think the alliance isn't too strict on like regulate like on on ship like uh, liaisons or whatever you want to call it, but like uh, it still can be it can be an abuse of power from a commanding officer potentially, you know. So. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now. Commander. Okay. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. What's your opinion on the last mission? Dr. Tassoni. She seems nice enough. <laughs> I mean, if you like the bookish sort. Mm -hmm. Any intentions there, Lieutenant? None, Commander. I prefer adventurous women. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, even after all these years, I still, I still get the gigglies. <laughs> we'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. Yeah, buddy. All right. I feel really bad. I may have, I may have missed on some conversation. Oh. Usually, I'm, I'm so much better about this. I'll go. I'll talk to the R last. Uh. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. Usually I am so much better at this, and I make a point of like after every major mission I go and talk to people. But I think I think I missed my chance. Potential. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I won't. I will stop freaking out about it. I may. It may be totally fine. Shepard, what can I do for you? Personal inquiry. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Come on! You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. Mmm, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> it seems pretty much the same to me. I'm a moron. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand. But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, oh. Shepard. Oh, boy. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us. 
but it's not what's killing us. Like he's, it, you know, it's like your ignorance doesn't upset me. You know, he's like past it at that point, essentially. You know, but it's just like, it is. It truly is ignorance. You know. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. It's terribly cruel, honestly. Like, in so many ways, but the fact that they... That the, I think Morden says later that they do, it's specifically like stillbirths. And I'm like, just, they, they, they did not want to make an infertility plague, essentially, I, I think, for some reason. But they actually made it so that like, you know, a Krogan woman can like go to term, but her child dies in stillbirth. And like, what a cruel mountain of bodies to have to look at. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It seems excessively cruel. Just make them infertile if that's like you, which is also cruel, but like don't make them carry children to term and then just have them die. You know? Like, I don't know. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? In the future, I will. You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage? fight for credits. He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Da, 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 da. So long, Rex. Shepard. Shepard. Anyway, sorry, Rex. Rex's conversations are always interesting, but they're a little heavy. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? Not everyone has a happy family life. No, I guess not. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Uh... Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Her face, she's so she looks so great. It's crazy. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies, at least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I mean, the Turians helped. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. Uh. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Uh, How do you get from relying on ourselves to mistreating our allies? I don't mean we should mistreat them, Commander. I just think we should be prepared to go it without them. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. I, it's just, I get it that humanity has, a, like, a, I don't know, and maybe this is, like, I don't know, a very, like, American-centric point of view, even though this game was made by a lot of Canadians. Um, but it's just, like, this, like, the super highly independent, like, you know, like, screw everybody else, we'll take care of ourselves mentality. It's just not healthy. It's not conducive to, like, a global world currently. You know, like, an interconnected global world, like, in present time. Or, in Mass Effect's case, in, like, an intergalactic world. Like, you don't gotta, like, hang on someone's coattails, but it doesn't mean you have to, like, just leave everything out to chance. But, like, don't... 
don't wall yourself off either, you know? You got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Mm. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. That's not a very good argument. It's not racism. Not it is. Human. Members it, of their species it definitely will always be more important to them than humans are. Oh my gosh. You sound like one of those terra firma party pamphlets, chief. Terra firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. These days they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. I hope my reasons are more rational. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth centrists as our own. I don't think I've quite have this string of conversation like this this conversation string with her about it before. I have yelled at her telling her she's out of line, but it, I think it shuts down the conversation pretty quick. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, ma'am. Ah. I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that one either. I never knew my family. Grew up an orphan on Earth. Anybody in your family I'd have heard of? <laughs> Couldn't say, Commander. Oh. So why are you out here? Just trying to get away from Earth? She's lying to me. Oh my goodness gracious. I've, I don't know if I've ever done this full conversation, like, real with her. No. The future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Yeah. I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the muck. He spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold breaking. Huh? Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Ah! Oh, Lord. You went to the Makapag boot camp, too? Their faces! Yeah. Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there. Kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, and then I, we were like, ha, 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 and then, shut up, no. It's a, I do want to draw the line there. It's nice, though, because I'm like, because, like, I might not know what gold breaking is, right? Like, as a player, which I didn't, I still don't remember <laughs> what it is. Um, but Shepard is like, gold breaking, oh, you had it, yeah, and she knows what it is. It's not, like, weird. Like, sometimes in Dragon Age Inquisition, right, you play an elf, and then you, like, you ask questions about, like, elven lore, and, it, and it's like, you would know that as an elf, you know, which is why I kind of like the fact that you only get to be one species in Mass Effect is it makes, like, a tighter narrative. You don't have to have so many outliers that you got to worry about and some will get lost, you know, in the cracks. All right, I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams, but this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. Head nod. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Okay. That went pretty well, honestly. I'm glad there won't be a problem. Anything else you need, Commander? Okay. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Okay, okay. That went pretty well, honestly. Commander, nice work out there. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Goodbye. <laughs> with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. Alright, time to mold Garrus. Buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. Mm, but said, interesting. It their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. There have been some in I haven't read a ton of them, but I have seen, like, tidbits of discussions about Garrus as a rogue cop, which is an interesting thing, especially nowadays, you know, to, to talk about. And so, like, I don't know, I have I think I've, like, I've, like, seen some of them, but I haven't, like, actively searched it out yet, but I should. It, it, I think there's some merit to it, as far as I can tell, but also... 
it's too complicated to get into right now, but uh, it is questionable. Like, you know, it shouldn't matter how I take down a suspect, just the fact that I do it. It's like, well, what if you're wrong? What if that's not a suspect, you know? What if, to use a relevant example, like kneeling on someone's neck because you think they stole something, you know what I mean? Like, that's not... That's not okay. People, criminals are still people. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, even if, if they have done terrible things, like, what if, if they haven't? Or what if it's not really that bad? What if the system only encourages violence towards people that you see as less than you? You know, it just goes off on that. It just goes off on that whole thing. You know, like, you, it's not just for, like, the, the, the person who's being accosted. It's for the people doing the accosting, you know? Like, to keep you in line with decent, like, ethical morals, you know? Anyway. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. C-Sex handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. It's... There is stuff that does feel like it gets in the way, right? Like politics, like some red tape... Where it's just like, I know this person is, a, you know, a terrible person who's done terrible things, but because one thing was done wrong in, like, the rules and regulations, like, they get to walk free and continue hurting people, you know? Like, that kind of a thing can be incredibly frustrating, you know? So, I understand, but luckily on Paragon, I, I try to mold Garrus into, you know, more of a Paragon-esque type guy who doesn't who learns to understand that the rules are there for reasons and that you only break those rules in very unique circumstances. Or not even break them, just bend them, I guess? I don't even, I don't think, as a paragon, I don't really do that, I think. I don't, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> I, I could probably, like, think about a lot of times where I've gone against the, the, what, like, the council told me to do or the alliance has told me to do, but, you know. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? Ah, I yes. I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. Yeah, if you're gonna be on my squad, bud, we're not just gonna go willy-nilly waving guns around, bullying people. Looking for supplies? Oh, yeah. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. I don't even think I have any junk. Um, I don't know how to... I just want to sell some stuff. Never mind. Uh, well, here, okay. What What does it decide is junk? Can I not sell this? Oh! Why am I get? Why is that? Why is it not letting me? Maybe I, I don't know. Am I doing it wrong? Okay, double click, I guess. Oh, just click on it. No? Yeah, double click. Sure, just sell most of the level one stuff for now, except for armor. I don't know. Just want to get rid of some of it before it overwhelms me. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian tally? 
She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. <laughs> my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. Which it seems as it seems like it's so, blah, like such a dangerous system, really. But it's the finest that the Turians and the humans could uh, could create. It is funny to me that like the Turians helped make it, and they're like, and they don't get one. You know, like why do the humans get it? I guess maybe it's kind of as a gift because the Turians attacked them. Maybe that, maybe, sort of, is a grand gesture of our bad, you know? There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. So FTL is still a thing, I'm trying to remember. Like, that's actually a thing that we do use. It's just really inefficient. But we can faster than, like, travel within systems clusters i think yeah yeah i want to know more about the normandy my baby she's the best ship i've ever served on probably the fastest vessel ever designed and she's the only one using the new tantalus drive core what's so special about the tantalus drive core we just talked about this it's about twice the size of any other vessel not only are we faster but we can run at ftl speeds longer before we have to discharge the core where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. No. Nope. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Obviously, my baby is the best ship ever made. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this they, small. They, they, I know, I'm, I'm amazing, truly, me I'm personally. I'm to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced this vessels in Citadel space. She's just gotta be starry-eyed. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on the vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I mean, Corians, uh, not as, I don't know, maybe as a rule, they do like ships, or at least are very good with technology because they have to be to survive. But when you get one like Tally, who truly does like ships, you know, to be on like a first class vessel like this, as opposed to like the falling, sort of the derelict kind of uh, flotilla, is just like, what? You know, night and day. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. 
But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Okay. I should go. I will. See you later. I will talk to her more. But Tali's stories tend to get very long, which is cool, right? Like, you learn a ton about the Quarians and everything, which is nice, because she's, like, one of the only ones you ever see. Um, I think until... No, you see a couple. Yeah. No, is it Mass Effect 2? It might be Mass Effect 2 that you see, Amalia. Sorry, corporate world. Yeah, it's true. You don't see any... You don't see any, I think, in one besides Tali. And then you meet a Quarian man in Mass Effect... Was it Mass Effect 2? Yeah, it's Mass Effect 2. He's hot. I can't remember his name. I, oh, it's right there. Mm. Oh, his name's right there, but I can't quite summon it to my... Anyway, Quarians are hot. Oh, <laughs> but yes, I will call this episode here because I'm running out of hard drive space and I need to make some room. So thank you all so much for watching this chatathon. If I did miss anything by not going down to talk to them before picking up we are, let me know. I don't think I can go back, but I could potentially link a video to a, you know, a playthrough or something that does have one. And I potentially, I guess I probably have one of my own has that in my other two Mass Effect 1 playthroughs that I've done. Haha, <laughs> whoopsie daisy. Anyway, uh, or is it two how I done? I don't know. It's fine. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one.